My lovely people, what's going on? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our endocrinology playlist. The previous video was the most important one, which was the difference between insulin land and glucagon land. Today, it's time to talk about the insulin receptor tyrosine kinase, or RTK. Here's glucose. Glucose wants to enter into the cell, such as skeletal muscle cell or fat cell. How does glucose enter? You have to open a door for glucose. The name of the door is GLUT4. Okay, who stimulates this door to open insulin, which binds to its insulin receptor, the receptor tyrosine kinase? All of this will start a cascade reaction by which you get this GLUT4 to open, let the glucose in so that your skeletal muscles and adipose tissue enjoy the time. We talked about all of this before. Today, we're talking about receptor tyrosine kinase for insulin and growth factors such as IGF-1, FGF, PGGF, and EGF. Insulin-like growth factor 1, fibroblast growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, and epidermal growth factor. Growth factors are here, but the growth hormone is here. Big difference. Quick review of the last video. Insulin stand versus glucagon stand. Insulin world has insulin only. Glucagon world has glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, thyrox. Basically, any hormone that's not insulin. Insulin world is anabolic. Glucagon world is catabolic. Insulin is the feeding state. Glucagon is in the fasting state. Insulin is pro, proteogenesis, glycogenesis lipogenesis, glucagon stimulates proteolysis, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, lipolysis, and ketosis. And this was the most important slide ever. Insulin is one land. All the other hormones are in the other land. Insulin, protein anabolic, glycogen anabolic, triglyceride anabolic. The other hormones such as glucagon, thyroxin, cortisol, epinephrine are protein catabolic, glycogen catabolic, triglyceride catabolic. Pause and review. Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. Medicosis Dickens, A Tale of Two Hormones. It's the land of anabolism. It was the land of catabolism. It was the age of proteogenesis. It was the age of proteolysis. It was the epoch of lipogenesis. It was the epoch of lipolysis. It was the season of glycogenesis. It was the season of glycogenolysis. It was the spring of anti-ketosis. It was the winter of ketone bodies. Here is insulin. Here is glucagon. Pause and review. Insulin is anti-ketogenic. Insulin promotes dephosphorylation. Insulin stimulates phosphatases but inhibits kinases. Insulin decreases cyclic AMP. When you're fasting, this is glucagon land, stimulates glycogenolysis. Break down the glycogen into glucose to use it for energy. But when you're feeding, it's insulin land, glycogen synthesis. Convert that glucose into glycogen and store it. When you eat, you get glucose, and then we have two stories. The entrance of glucose into the pancreas to stimulate the beta cell, and this is GLUT2. And then the beta cell of the pancreas gets stimulated to secrete insulin. Insulin will go to the target cell, usually skeletal muscle or adipose tissue, and to tell them, hey, get that glucose in, and then you can store it as glycogen, or you can use it if you want. The door here is GLUT4. The first story was discussed in the previous video. Today, we'll talk about the second story. But hey, Medicosis, can we review the first story real quick? You wish is my command. You ate, you have glucose. Glucose into the cell. Glucose 6-phosphate because phosphate fixes stuff. And this way, glucose will never go back to the blood. All right, glucose 6-phosphate, glycolysis, more ATP. More ATP will shut this potassium channel. Potassium will have to stay in a positive inside the cell. A positive equals depolarization, hashtag activation, which opens the calcium channel. Calcium comes in. Calcium is the hero of contraction. It's going to contract and burst this insulin vessel, pew, and then insulin is out. Look at this. Insulin and C-peptide are now in the bloodstream. Insulin will float in the bloodstream until it reaches adipose tissue and skeletal muscle. It will tell them to open their door. What's the name of their door? GLUT4. And when they open the GLUT4, glucose is going to come inside the fat cell and the skeletal muscle cell. We're talking about here. Now insulin has reached the target. What's the target? Skeletal muscle or fat cell? Insulin will try to convince them to open their door. What's the name of their door? GLUT4. And when they open their door, glucose is gonna come in. How does this happen? Insulin has to bind to its receptor. The receptor is called receptor tyrosine kinase. It has a very good property called autophosphorylation. It doesn't need help from anybody. It phosphorylates itself. 
It's like Nancy Ajram, a strong independent woman, or as the godfather Kevin Samuels might say, quote, I'm a strong independent woman, I don't need no man, unquote. Such is the life of the insulin receptor tyrosine kinase, autophosphorylation, I'm self-sufficient. And then I have two pathways, the RAS, MAP, kinase pathway, and the PI3 kinase. It's this PI3 kinase that gets the GLUT4 out of the vesicle. This is basically the doors. And then the doors are here in the cell. Open the door, get the glucose in. Again, the door is not just a hole in the wall. It's a very complex protein structure. What do cancers and insulin have in common? Both love growth. So when I tell you that insulin is going to stimulate something called RAS, and this RAS stands for rat sarcoma, don't be surprised because sarcoma is a cancer that loves growth. Insulin is also pro-growth. So in the next slide, many of the things that you will learn about have to do with cancer. They also have to do with how insulin works. Insulin is here trying to act on the target cell. What's the target cell? The cell is a fat cell or a skeletal muscle cell. Let's go, insulin. Insulin binds to its receptor. What's the name of the receptor? Insulin receptor or receptor tyrosine kinase, which has an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. What does kinase do? Kinase add phosphate. Hashtag autophosphorylation. Strong, independent, I don't need help. I am self-sufficient. We activate each other. You have an alpha subunit and beta subunit. We activate each other. We don't need help from outside forces. There is no need for G protein or GTP. We have two alpha subunits and the two beta subunits. If you leave them alone, alpha wants to inhibit the beta, but insulin comes and inhibit the alpha leaving the beta uninhibited. It's a story of disinhibition or double inhibition. If you leave alpha alone, it wants to inhibit the beta. Insulin comes and inhibit the alpha, activating the beta indirectly. Now we have activation called phosphorylation. Phosphorylation of what? Of the IRS. The organization that takes your money? No, this is the insulin receptor substrate. Oh, IRS insulin receptor substrate. When they get phosphorylated, they get activated. And then you have two stories, the story of the RAS and the story of the PIP3. Which one is gonna open the gate, the PIP3 story? Which one is gonna help the cell grow and multiply? It's the RAS story. So let's first start with the PIP3 story. The IRS was phosphorylated and activated. This will phosphorylate and activate PIP3 kinase by binding with the SH2 domain. Why do they call it SH2? It's the sarcoma homology domain number two. Sarcoma, why? Because insulin is pro-growth, doofus. When they first discovered all of this crap, they discovered it in rats who had cancer. So that's why they named these after cancers. The PIP3 kinase pathway is active. What do kinases do? They add phosphate, converting the PIP2 into PIP3. The difference is a phosphate. This is active. PIP3 now is active to do what? To activate PDPK1, which will activate PKB, which stands for protein kinase B. Do you remember the story of protein kinase A? Yeah, that was the story of GS-coupled receptors, such as glucagon. So glucagon activates protein kinase A, but insulin activates protein kinase B, because there is a difference between the insulin land and the glucagon land. You activate protein kinase A when you are starving or running from a tiger. It's the sympathetic land. It's the starvation land. But insulin is the land of abundance. You stimulate protein kinase B to open the GLUT4 to get the glucose in because you were just relaxing and you had a beautiful, doozy, fatty, carby meal, such as my double cheeseburger. When the protein kinase B is active, it lets glucose in. How did it happen? First, I had to synthesize the wood of the door. What's that? That's GLUT4. It was in the physical. I got it out. Now the door is open for glucose to come in. What will you do with this glucose? 
I can use it or I can make glycogen from it. Glycogen synthesis. This protein kinase B is pro-growth and anabolism. Therefore, you get also protein th synthesis. That's why your cell is going to grow. That's why cancer is going to grow. And this is the story of the mTOR, which is a huge story in pharmacology. I have a course about this on my website, and it's called Anti-Cancer Pharmacology Course. That was the first story, which is the PIP3 kinase. What does PIP stand for? Phosphatidyl inositol triphosphate kinase, which converts the phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate or bisphosphate into phosphatidyl inositol triphosphate. What does the PDPK stand for? It's the phosphatidine dependent protein kinase one. Phosphatidine dependent protein kinase. Add a phosphate and activate. This protein kinase B is also known as ACT. You know when you watch an ad by a freaking lawyer telling you to act now? Protein kinase B is gonna act now. Act to do what? To open that GLUT4 carrier for the glucose to enter to perform glycogen synthesis and protein synthesis. Thank you so much. The second story is the story of the RAS. After you phosphorylated the IRS, insulin receptor substrate, you will phosphorylate GERB S2. And then you will save our souls by activating SOS. GTP is gonna activate the RAS. RAS is gonna activate the RAF. RAF is gonna activate MEC. MEC is gonna activate MAPK. MAPK is gonna activate EPK. And then APK will cause transcription and increase cell survival, cell growth, and differentiation, which is true whether we're talking about insulin or whether we're talking about cancer. And that's why many of our growth factors are involved with cancer, such as the platelet-derived growth factor, epidermal growth factor. All of these growth factors cause growth and cancers proliferate thanks to growth. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What does the GERB2 stand for? It stands for growth factor receptor bound protein because it's going to cause growth. What does SOS stand for? Son of 7LESS. What is 7LESS? It's a gene that encodes receptor tyrosine kinase. This SOS is also known as GEF, which is a guanine nucleotide exchange factor. And that's why the next step is guanine triphosphate, GTP, which activates RAS, rat sarcoma. Why do we call this RAF? Rat fibrosarcoma. MEC is the mitogen signal regulated kinase. MAPK is the mitogen activated protein kinase. ERK is the extracellular signal regulated kinase. Man, who named these things? Now you know how insulin works, but how does glucagon work? It's the same story of the G protein coupled receptor. This is protein kinase A, because protein kinase B is for the insulin. This is how glucagon works. This is how epinephrine works. Pause and review. Glucagon and the beta stimulation love protein kinase A. Insulin hates protein kinase A, but insulin loves protein kinase B. Pause and review. The keyword here is growth or anabolic. If you want to learn more about estrogens, androgens, thyroxine, insulin, and all of the insulin types and the doses and how you calculate them, check out my endocrine pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectsnetis.com. I also have a cardiac pharmacology course for antiarrhythmics, antihyperlipidemics, antihypertensives, diuretics, etc. There is a lot of renal pharmacology here. And for a limited time, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code KIDNEY. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.